I'm going to speak today on Mark part two. Y'all ready for it? I want you to look at the scripture in Samuel. The Lord said, this is the one anointing. He's talking to Samuel. And the Lord said to Samuel, he said, this is the one anoint him. And David stood there among his brothers. His daddy didn't even bring him in. Take it off screen just a minute. His daddy didn't even bring him in with his other brothers. David was left outside. He was just a little ruddy-faced shepherd boy. All of his brothers were, they were impressive. They were, uh, when you looked at them, you would think that they would certainly be leaders. They were handsome. They were tall. They were men that was, uh, looked like that they qualified for about anything. So David's daddy, Jesse, didn't even bring David in the house. So it says, <clears throat> David stood there among his brothers. His daddy called him in because Samuel said, is this all? Is this all your children? He said, well, I've got one more. He's outside. He said, he's he just young. He said, well, bring him in. And when Samuel saw him, go back to verse 12. It said, when, when, uh, when Samuel saw him, the Lord said to Samuel, this, this is him right here. This is him. Anoint him. And David stood there among his brothers, and Samuel took the flask of olive oil he had brought and anointed David with the oil. And the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David from that day on. Then Samuel returned to Ramah. Now let's look at this, something that I want to bring to your attention. Samuel took the flask of olive oil that he had brought. He anointed David with oil, and when he anointed him with oil, something joined the oil. And it was the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon him from the time Samuel marked him with oil. Ooh, ooh. Could I just say to you today, we're going to mark you with oil at the end of this service. And we're going to mark your children. We're going to mark your children with oil at the end of this service. And I don't want to get in a hurry right now, but I just want to just, let's soak in this moment for a moment because I just sense that there's just something good about today, something good. <laughs> yeah, I really do. Just right there where you are. Just lift your hands and begin to receive. Just right there where you are. Because there's a spirit, there's a, there's a wonderful spirit right here right now. I feel it soaking in. Let's just worship the Lord for a minute. Come on, everybody. Lift your voice and lift your hands. Y'all been out this week and all kind of stuff. Y'all been working among all kind of stuff. Now that we're here, who says we have to be rushed? Just times like this right here, you just need to soak. And just not be in a hurry. I'm in no hurry. Y'all in a hurry? I'm in no hurry. Just soak. Soak in his presence. Soak. I've been in, I've been in atmospheres before where I just, just lay there and just soak. It's like every pore of my body opened up and I'm just soaking in the presence of God. Lord, we love you. We love your presence. Nothing like your presence, Lord. And we bless you today. Well, you may be seated. The Lord spoke to me a few weeks ago, a few days ago, not, not just a few days ago. And he said, he asked me this question and I never really thought about it. He said, um, have you ever wondered how you appear to the spirit world? And I thought for a moment, and I didn't really quite understand what the Lord was saying to me, and I thought, well, hmm, not really, I guess. And the Lord said, have you wondered how the spirit world sees you? And I'm trying to figure out well, how do they see me, and is there something they should be looking for? And then the Holy Spirit said, I want you to speak to those that listen to you and ask them this question, have they ever wondered how they appear to spirit beings in the spirit world? 
I'm a person that believes in the natural world, just like we all do. We live here. But I'm also one that also tremendously believes in the spirit world, not from a spooky standpoint at all, but I believe in the spirit world. And I know that one day whenever time is up and I go home to be with the Lord, that is a spirit world. And I'm going to spend eternity there, and so will you. And we know that there's angels, and we know that there's demons. And there's other beings also that doesn't bother me that there's demons. I don't ever worry about them. I just don't worry about them. I concentrate on the angels, and I concentrate on the Holy Spirit, but I don't worry about demons. I just don't worry about them. And I want you to stop it. If you worry about demons and you worry about the devil and what he's able to do, stop it right now. And only you can do that. I can't do that for you. I can't go up and anoint you and say, stop worrying. That's something you're going to have to stop. You're just going to have to stop it. So today, I'm speaking on being marked. And as I begin to think about it, I said, well, I wonder how I do appear to, to beings in the spirit world. And I wonder how people from Church of His Presence, not only the people in the house, but the people that watch us online, how they appear to the spirit world. What distinguishing mark is it that spirits see that marks us and makes us different and gives us protection or either makes us vulnerable? So with that in mind, that's how this message came. And the message came within five minutes. Let's talk about the mark of the beast real quick. Let's just go right to the book of Revelation. I want to look at the scripture. It said, he causes all, this is the Antichrist, the false prophet, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark. There it is. There it is right there. A mark. To receive a mark. Say it out loud with me. To receive. Say it out loud. To receive a mark. Okay. In their right hand, hold your right hand up. And touch your forehead and in their forehead. This is the ones that's left to go through the tribulation period after the rapture. And no man can buy or sell except he receives this mark. Uh, are either the name of the beast, which we don't know what that name is, and many people have said, well, the mark, the, the, the beast is a computer. No, it's not a computer. It's a person. The false prophet is a person. You don't call a computer a prophet. And the name of the beast are the number of his name. So there's three things right here that's going to identify those during the tribulation period that have aligned themselves and yielded their will to the Antichrist and the false prophet and it will be um, a mark. It calls it a mark. It calls it the name of the beast, which is the Antichrist, or the number of his name, which is 666. And it says here is wisdom. Let him that understand count the number of the beast. It is the number of a man. It is the number of 600, three score, and six. So it's 666. The Antichrist will cause people to have his mark, his name, and the number on them that serve him. Now, the Bible says that you can't buy or sell. Look at that in verse 17. You can't buy or sell. So if you are here after the rapture and you're ready for the coming of the Lord, everything's going to change. Everything's going to change drastically after the church is caught up, after the general resurrection. And so if you miss the general resurrection, the tribulation begins, the Antichrist is revealed, the false prophets reveal. Everything's going to be clamped down on tremendously. You think right now things are bad? Friend, this is wonderful compared to what it's going to be if you miss the coming of Christ. And so you can't buy or sell. That means if you have um, uh, a need, you're, you, have, you need to get another house or you need to, your car's broke down or you need to buy groceries or you need to buy gas. You can't buy or sell anything except you have one of those three things and it means that you've sold your soul to the devil and you can never be forgiven for it. And I'm not saying that's what the Bible says. 
So also, there's another thing in the Bible, in the book of Revelation, and it's God's mark. And he marks those in the tribulation with a, play, with a thing that's not called a mark, but it's called a seal, S-C-A-L. And this is found also in the book of Revelation. He opened the bottomless pit, the angel did. There arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace. The sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit, and there came out, a smoke of the, uh, out of the smoke locust upon the earth. And under those locusts was given power, uh, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God. Now, this is a completely different category. This is a marked people in the tribulation period. These are those that God has the angel mark with a seal. What does this seal look like? There's no information about what it looks like. But it's recognizable. It's recognizable to the spirit world. That mark will make the difference between who is affected and who is protected. Look at the scripture in Revelation. After these things I saw four angels standing in the four corners of the earth holding the four winds of the earth that the wind should not blow on the earth or on the sea nor any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the earth having, or from the east having the seal of the living God and he cried, he had the seal of the living God. The angel did, he had that seal. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. He said, hey, don't hurt the earth. Don't hurt the sea. Don't hurt the trees till we have sealed the servants of God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed and it was 144,000 of all the 12 tribes of Israel, that's 12,000 from each 12 tribes, it came to 144,000. So they had to be marked. The angel had the seal of God, said he had the seal of the living God. And he said, don't do anything until we can mark this 144,000. So in the tribulation period, it's going to be a marked generation. Those that's going after the devil and those that will give in and yield to him and his pressure will be marked in three different ways, and they will never be able to receive forgiveness for it, although it may give them opportunity to buy and sell just briefly, maybe for a year or two, but if they take that mark, they'll never be able to be forgiven and they'll never be able to go to heaven. But the Bible said that there'll also be another group of people that will be sealed by God in their foreheads. Revelation 14 and verse 1 is another thing I want to bring to your attention. It said, I looked and a lamb stood on Mount Zion and with him 144,000 having the Father's name written in their foreheads. Now, oh, wait a minute. Now, they had a seal in their foreheads, but now they got the Father's name. What does it say? Not Jesus' name, but the Father's name in their forehead. Wish I had time to really stay on that, but if I get bogged down here, I'm not going to get through. So there's something to that. I don't have time to talk about it. One thing is for sure. If you're left here to suffer the great tribulation, everybody's going to be marked. The devil's people's going to be marked, the devil's crowd, and God's people's going to be marked. Here's what God said. God said in Hosea, he said, my people, how many of you are God's people? My people. God said, my people are destroyed. Well, what? What? Your people? You mean to tell me you can't protect your people from being destroyed? God said, I'm doing everything I can. I'm giving them inspiration. I'm giving them information. I'm giving them revelation. And if they don't believe it, the devil's going to destroy them. God's given you everything to be successful. But if you don't implement what he's given you, the devil's going to tear you all to pieces. You believe that? So God said, my people, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I'm going to reject you that you shall not be a priest to me. So here's one thing I want to say to you right off the bat. You cannot believe any further than what you know. 
You can't believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit if you don't know about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You can't believe in divine healing if you don't know about divine healing. You can't believe in the coming of Christ if you haven't heard about the coming of Christ. How are you going to believe these things unless you hear? And the Bible says, how shall they hear without a preacher? So, whoa, it's my responsibility to tell you some things, whether you want to hear it or not. But one day, I promise you, when we get to heaven, you'll never be able to point a finger at me and say, he didn't tell me. Amen? So, the lack of knowledge is the mother of destruction. The lack of knowledge is the mother of destruction. God said, my people are destroyed. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. The lack of knowledge is the mother of destruction. Now, the Bible says in the days of Job, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, where have you come from? And Satan said to the Lord, from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, have you considered my servant Job? Of all things, God surfaces a man's name. Wow, what confidence God had in that man. God had confidence in that man that he was basically saying to the devil, I don't care what you do to him. He'll never betray me. I don't care what you do to him. I believe in Job and he'll never betray me. And so he said, if you consider my servant Job, there's none like him in the earth. Oh my goodness, what a distinguishing mark upon him. Nobody else like him in the earth. A perfect man and an upright man and one that fears God and escheweth evil. And Satan answered the Lord and said, <laughs> he said, does God, does Job fear God for naught? You put a hedge about him. The devil said to Job, to God, he said, you've got, you got a mark on this guy. I've seen him. We can't, me and my demons, my, my, me and my spirit world can't get to him. You've got a mark on him. You got a hedge about him. And you got a hedge about not only him, but his house. That means his children. Amen. And you got a hedge about all that he has on every side Amen. his property, his cattle, his assets, his land. You got a hedge on everything the man's got. Have I considered him? Yes, I've considered him. But I can't get to him, and neither can my spirits. You have blessed the work of his hands. Oh, listen to what the devil is. The devil is preaching now. The devil's saying, you bless the work of his hands. What? The word blessed coming out of the mouth of the devil? The devil said, you bless the work of his hands. Bless the work of his hands. What do you know about blessings? The devil knows them when he sees them. And you know what? The devil knows about the blessings of God on your life too when he sees them. How many of you knows you're blessed and the devil knows you're blessed? Sure he does. But now put forth your hand and touch all that he has. The devil said to the Lord, if you'll, if you'll take your hand now and remove this mark of protection on him and all that he has, he'll curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, all right. All that he has is in your power. Until that time, it wasn't. It was all in God's power. But God said, all right, all that he has is in your power. Only upon himself. Don't put forth your hands. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. I find it so insightful every time I read this that Satan brings to God's attention that he can't get to Job. That is the most remarkable thing. Amen. Out of all the people in the earth, God had this man marked. He was perfect and upright. He hated evil and he feared God. That's why he was marked. And out of all the people in the earth, the world had gone to hell in a handbasket, pardon the expression. But there was a man that God loved and looked to and God reverenced Job and he protected him. And so the devil said, I can't touch him because he's marked. What was the mark? It was a hedge. 
You hedge in what you own. You can't put a fence up at your place in the country or in the city. You can't put a fence up on what you don't own. If you do, you're going to have to take it down. Somebody's going to sue you. You put a hedge about what you own. How many of you know God puts a hedge about what he owns? And could I tell you right now, he owns you lock, stock, and barrel, and he's put a hedge about you. Be confident in the fact that God has a hedge about you. And neither Satan nor his evil entities could get to Job. And so what was marked? Now, let's just look at it one more time before I move on. What was marked? Job was marked. His house was marked. His, his dwelling. His children. His wife. His assets. His possessions. And the Bible says that this was his behavior now. This is what shocks me. Here's the devil telling God, this is the reality of the situation. But here's Job on top of the earth, not knowing the conversation the devil has just had with God, not knowing how the devil sees him. That's why the Lord asked me, he said, have you ever wondered how the spirit world sees you? And he said, tell those that's listening to you and those that listen to you, ask them if they've ever wondered how the spirit world sees them. So here's Job on top of the earth now. And this is what I got to talk about for a few minutes. He's on top of the earth. And the Bible said his sons went and feasted in their houses, everyone his day, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and drink with them. Now, this is Job's sons and his daughters. And it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning, offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus he did continually, continually. Now I want to talk about that for a minute. Let everybody look at me and listen to what I'm about to tell you. It may be. are killer words. Those three words are killer words. They can destroy you. It may be that my sons have sinned. Here's the devil talking to God. I can't get to him. And here's a man on top of the earth doing religious sacrifices. He's doing sacrifice, and they ain't doing a dime's worth of good. How many of you knows you can be religious and do all kinds of religious calisthenics, and they don't do you a dime's worth of good? Why? Why? Because you're moving in fear, you're not moving in faith. You can go to some of these highfalutin big time churches, and they have all these liturgies that you can go through, and you're just doing a bunch of calisthenics, but unless you have faith in God, they're not doing you a dime's worth of good. Somebody help me preach this morning. Look at it. And it said, Job sent and sanctified him. He sent and sanctified his kids. And he said, he rose up early, offered burnt offerings. He's out there in the yard, killing animals and burning them. And he's offering, and sacrificing, and sanctifying his kid. Oh, it may be. How many times? How many times? How many times has those words come out of our mouth? It may be that I have cancer. It may be that by the time I get to retirement, I probably won't have enough money to retire. It may be, honey, just want you to be prepared, but it may be that we lose everything. There's a hurricane coming. It may be that it just tears everything all to pieces. It may be that I lose my job. 
It may be that COVID may take mama and daddy or may take one of our children. It may be that COVID may take some of our loved ones. It may be that we lose our home. It may be that this rampant inflation right now is going to eat away everything we've ever worked for. It may be that our children turns out to be heathens and godless. It may be. I want you to listen. I want you to listen. The devil is down there speaking facts to the truth. God is the truth. And the devil's speaking facts. And he's saying, I can't get to it. I can't get, I can't get to his children. I can't get to his, his dwelling place. I can't get to his flock. Everything he's got is marked. And the devil's up, and, and Job's up there on top of the earth offering sacrifices, killing animals, shedding their blood, offering burnt sacrifices, sanctifying his kids. Fear, fear opened the door to the devil in Job's life. And I want to ask you a question. How many times, how many times has fear opened up a door to the devil in your life? I want to tell you something about doors. I believe in doors. And I believe in opening doors. I believe in opening the door to the Holy Spirit. I believe in opening the door to the glory and the presence of God. I believe in opening up the door in church services for healing to flow. I believe in opening up the gates and letting the king of glory come in. I believe in that stuff. I believe in it. But to open up a door to the devil with your mouth and with your fear, how, friend, how can you say some of the things you say? How can I say some of the things I say when I get afraid? And when you get afraid, opening up a door to the devil on your own children. Opening up a door to the devil on your finances and on your future. How many of us? It may be. It, oh, it may be. You know, the truth of the matter was, it wasn't. But when Satan said, or when Job said, it may be, Satan was saying one thing to God, and Job was contradicting even the devil, speaking truth. And he was contradicting God. And he was contradicting God's word. Here's just one thing I want to say before I move on. You need to be real careful that you don't contradict the Bible. Amen. Because listen to me. Go ahead. It's all right. Go ahead. Let me tell you something. This is the, the truth. It is the word of God. It is the recorded word of God. And I'm going to tell you, once you get outside the pages of this right here, there's nothing left for you but this right here. And what are you doing contradicting this? Who gave you that authority? You're taking your life. You're taking your kid's life. You're taking your welfare in your own hands because you're saying things that God never said about you. Ooh, I'm preaching better than y'all acting. Now listen to this. Job lived in fear, but he was still serving God. Come on now. He was living in fear, but he was... What did God say about him? Have you considered my servant Job? Oh, yeah, I have. God said, he loves me. Oh, he loves you? What happens when loving God is not enough? I know I'm, I'm shaking some of you up a little bit, but just listen to me. God said to the devil, he loves me. He fears me. He hates evil. But what happens when you love God and you hate evil and you fear the Lord, but you're moving in fear, and even though you love God, you're opening up the door to the devil and saying, come on in and have at it. You might say, well, why didn't the Lord rise up and do something? God's given you every weapon that it takes to be successful. And he's not going to rise up and do it for you. Amen? <sighs> what Job should have said was this. Ha! I'm not worried about my youngins. They're hedged in, praise God. I'm not worried about my wife. I'm not worried about myself. 
I love God. I fear God. I ain't going to be out there burning sacrifices every day. I'm not going to be sanctifying my kids every day. I'm covered with a hedge. I've got a mark on me. I'm protected. God loves me so much. He won't let the devil at me. He's blessed me with such possessions and God's blessed me with such assets. I don't worry about nothing. Come on, give God praise. I said, give God praise. Yes. Yes. Job should have been marching back and forth like this. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. No, sir. I'm not going to get out there and be offering sacrifices for my kids. God's blessed my kids. We're a happy family. The world may be going to hell, but I'm not. Let me tell you something right now. You need to just go ahead and belt out right now. Me and my house are marked and we're blessed. That's right. Come on, give him praise. Stand up. Act like you mean it. Woo! Woo! Hey, 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 hey. I said hallelujah. Woo! Woo! <laughs> you be seated. Suppose I come out here today and I'd have said, oh, glory to God, isn't God good? But I tell you what, y'all better go out there and you better start offering up some sacrifices to your house because it's no telling what's going to happen to your family. It may be they may get killed. What kind of gospel would that be? It may be they've sinned. It may be that y'all will have a funeral in two weeks. Don't even think like that. Don't even let it enter your psyche. Don't even let it come into your mind. Block it out. Hey, you would be surprised. You'd be surprised when I preach like this. Every time I preach, there's some price that I have to pay with the devil whenever I preach like this because he attacks me. Every time I preach. And you'd be surprised whenever I get through preaching like this, the devil come along and tell me all these things I'm telling you, he'll tell me that these things are going to happen to me. You know what I say? <laughs> liar, liar, liar. I'm covered in the blood. as I was walking across the floor. Son, have you ever wondered how the devil sees you? Have you ever wondered how the spirit world sees you? And I had to say, I don't know. I don't think so. But now, (laughs) I know how he sees me. And I know how he sees you. You're marked with a mark. 
Oh my God. I said, oh my God. But now look at here, be seated. I am happy this morning. <laughs> I say yes, Lord. I say yes, Lord. I say yes, yes, yes. How can you say anything else? Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Lord. Thank you for this precious word. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word will never pass away. Everything's going to burn one day, but my word will never pass away. There's people that want to come in here and change this, tear it apart, amend it, revise it. I say, leave me alone and leave my word alone. We're going to be just fine. Job should have said, oh, no, I'm marked. My babies are marked. My dwelling is marked. I'm protected. God loves me so much. Thank you, Lord, for even surfacing my name with the devil. How honored I am you'd even raise my name. But you know what? Listen to me. Even in spite of Job's falls, he was still the best God had. And he was moving in fear. He had a spirit of fear on him. He did this continually. It may be. And some people think if you just say a little something wrong, God's going to abandon you. Job was the best God had on the earth. Full of errors and full of mistakes. But he was the best God had and God had him protected. I just want to tell you this before I let you go. <clears throat> Those of you at home, listen to me. When this service is over, I want you to understand one thing. Other people might not recognize it. When you go to the parking lot or when you cut the television off or your computer off, they might not see it. But I want to tell you, there's a mark on you. And God knows it. The angels knows it. And trust me, Satan and demons knows it. But now here's what I wanted to tell you before I move on. Here's what the Lord said to me. He said, tell the people to act like there's a mark on them. Yeah. Yeah. To act like it. You gotta act like it. Act like it. One time I had a lady at Brownsville tell me, she said, I can't stand the way you walk. I said, well, I guess I walk like my dad. I, my dad, I saw him walk, and I, I think I walk like him. She said, I can't stand it like you're so arrogant and full of pride. She said, you walk with your shoulders back, and you walk out on that platform like you own the place. I thought, well, I don't mean to walk like that. But when you believe you're blessed, and when you believe that the Lord's with you, and you believe there's no weapon formed against you that's going to... <laughs> Give me my satchel. The next Sunday, I wanted to come out like this. Lift them shoulders back. Lift your head up. You're blessed. You are the blessed of the Lord. Act like it's so. Act like it's so. You know what, after that, 
You may be seated. But you know, after that, it affected me, that criticism affected me. And I began to think, I asked Brenda, I said, Brenda, do I walk arrogant? She said, yes, you do. <laughs> no, she said, no, you don't walk arrogant at all. She said, you walk like a man of God. I said, thank you very much. But after that, and I still remember the woman that said it, I still remember her name. It could be. <laughs> but I remember what she said, and every time I'd get ready to walk out on the platform, I'd hear, you walk so arrogant. You make me sick. You walk so arrogant, so erect with your shoulders back. And it got to where I'd walk out on the platform and I'd try, not to, I'd try to think, well, man, I don't want to appear to be arrogant. I don't want to appear to walk out here erect, you know, like that with my shoulders back. And I think that the devil wants us all bent over. The devil wants you bent over. He wants me to not have no confidence. You do not have no confidence. He wants you to walk in fear and not in faith. But you know what? When you walk in the light of the Word as He's in the light, you're going to walk like Jesus. I just, I just, you know what? I just can't imagine, I can't imagine Jesus walking around, you know, with his shoulders slumped and couldn't look at people in the eye, you know? And he, he just, he had an inferiority call. I can't see that, can you? I believe whenever he walked around, he said, I am the way. His head was up. His shoulders were back. There was kindness in his voice. I am the way. I am the truth and I am the life. And so what the Holy Spirit said for me today to tell you, and specifically he said for me to tell you this, he said, tell the people to start acting like they're marked. Act like it. Act like it. And so after it was all over, The Bible says that Job did not charge God foolishly. How many of you know you can love God and never charge God foolishly, but be so deceived yourself that you keep God segregated and you love Him and you worship Him, but you're walking in the era of your own ways? And I just have a question for you. Reckon how much era there is in us that we picked up through the years from people, from family members from other churches, other ministers, other materials that we've read. Reckon how much stuff is in us that the Lord would have to say, have you ever wondered how the spirit world sees you? Because here's, here's what I think the answer is. If you ever see yourself the way God sees you and the way the angel sees you, you'll never see yourself the same again. You never will. So, my time is gone. That, that took up an hour. But I want to mark every one of you again today. And I'm going to have everybody marked. We're going to have the brethren to come right now. As soon as they come do that, we want to start moving five rows of pews. Uh, Brother Burke's going to go back and anoint your family. We're going to pray for you again. I've said enough today in this message that you can understand that you may have some of these traits in your own life that Job had. It's time to get rid of them. It's time to amend our confession and to say about ourselves what God says about us. If you will stand, please. I want all the brethren to come, those of you at home. I want you to take the oil. I don't know what kind of oil you have there, but I want you to take some oil and I want you to anoint yourself right now along with everybody here. We're gonna pray for you in just a few minutes. We're gonna pray for your needs in your life. We're gonna pray for those of you that are suffering physically. We're gonna pray for your children. We're gonna pray for everything to do with you, all that you have on every side. We're gonna pray over it. If you get in trouble, do you believe the Lord will come after you and help you? Yes. Yes. I'm asking you, do you really believe that? Yes. Let me ask you this, if you get kidnapped, and nobody knows where you are, do you believe God will send his angels to help you? Yes. You believe it? Yes. If, you get, if you come up on something and you have great loss, 
Do you believe the Lord will bail you out and help you? Yes. Do you believe if there's a pandemic in the earth, do you believe that God's got you marked where he can keep you protected? Yes. Yes. A thousand shall fall at your right hand and yes. thousands at your left, but it shall not come nigh thee, not come nigh thy dwelling. <clears throat> you know what? <clears throat> Some days you may get up in the morning and you may feel totally saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. Woo, glory to God, glory to God. You may wake up two days from now and feel like you've never been saved a day in your life. <laughs> but here's, let me, let, me, let me say this to you. Listen to me. Let me say this to you. It don't make a bit of difference how you feel. You got to get your feelings adjusted with the facts. And God is with you. And the Lord's with me. And you know what? It's not going to be long until everything's going to calm down. The storm on the inside of you is going to calm down. And your emotions will get healed up and you're going to be fine. Then you're going to feel like a powerful man or woman of God again. But when you don't feel like a powerful man or woman of God, it don't make a bit of difference because you're still marked. You're still marked. I'm looking at people right now that I can only imagine how the demons see you. I can only imagine. They go to kill Patrick's church. <laughs> they go to that church over there in Daphne. He's been putting oil on them, demons. Stay away from them. You're marked. You're marked. I just want to declare over all of you today, I just want to declare over you emphatically that you're marked. You're not just marked with olive oil. That olive oil is going to wash away when you wash your hair. It's going to be gone. But there's a mark far greater than olive oil. There's some kind of a mark on your life that segregates you and sets you apart from everybody else. And I'm, I'm going to tell you something. I'm just, I'm going to be, I'm going to just brag a little bit. I just know every day whenever I get up and move around, not because I'm a preacher, but I just know every day whenever I move around, I know I'm different. I know I'm different. My mother used to tell me, she would say, son, you're different. And I said, well, what do you mean? She said, well, the hand of God's on you. I said, what does that mean? She said, I don't know, but the hand of God's on you. And you know what? I want to tell you the same thing. The hand of God's on you. Hand of God's on your children. Yes. Hand of God's on your daughter. Yes. Hand of God's on your son. Hand of God's on you. Yes. You know something? If it wasn't, the devil took you out a long time ago. He took me out a long time ago. You just marked. Just, just you just flat out marked. Yeah. And whenever I get through this message, whenever that is. You're going to say, mm-hmm, I'm marked. Yeah. Amen. Don't bow your shoulders over. Don't hold your head down. You get that head up. You get that head up. Hold your head up. I said, hold your head up. Not in arrogance. Not sticking your nose up in there. You hold that head up and say, devil, whatever you got, there's something greater on me than whatever you got. God's with me. As a mighty terrible one. <laughs> Just touch that place where you're anointed. Just touch it right now. I speak in the name of Jesus. A confirmation over you today. The word confirmation that it's confirmed as of today. You're marked. You're set aside. You're different. Demons see you and angels see you and there's not a thing that they can do about it. Stop making sacrifices and stop saying it may be and start saying I know in whom I have believed and I am confident in the fact that he's able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. And Father, I speak blessings on their children and on their grandchildren. I speak blessings on their home, their dwelling places. I speak blessings upon all that they have on every side. I speak blessings, Lord, that no matter what happens economically, their money is going to be there when everything else 
is disappearing all over the place. Their money is going to be left and it's going to be multiplied and they're going to be better off after than they were going into it. I just declare it over you in Jesus' name.